Onivia. League of Legends highlights. Powered by ArcaneBet.com. Bet live on eSports. Now it's CLG's turn. If they do expect the Akali top play, that's more likely one of the two. Regardless, it's double melee, and Gangplank will come through yet again. I have seen this matchup a lot. Gangplank into the, the ones melee. they're still sitting there, uh, yep. as they're going to be easy for him to pick up. Yeah, expecting a difference of five. Now, Bafra's taking some damage, but has the shield available. Finds a slow and a Zayza. One more auto could be a chomp as well. The flash in, and that's the flashless Braum. That will be a kill. It's actually claimed by Biofrost. And Wiggly at only 100 health. No right. chase. In. Aurelia has so much threat at level six. Everybody knows this, so they're all coming mid. And they're walking over as Niski still has the flash. The big play up towards the jungler who is flashed us now himself. Moogly goes down and now the fight continues on. Over the wall is stick safe, but this is still a lot of punishment for the CLG support. And C9 pick up two kills for the mid roam. And that is all, you know, this is C9 turning it around after that first gank. Yeah, everything around mid lane there. C9 are the first ones with the control ward. Niski holds the wave in front of his turret. The CLG go for the base. Up the Mancy, and again, those turret plates. So, Counterlogic Gaming temporarily up in gold down the Cloud Drake. Now, again, the play towards mid lane. Niski not going to find that stun right there. Jumps right back to his own minion wave. And now he goes once again now towards, Wiggly. Wiggly, towards PUE. They got a lot of damage here. They're going to find not quite the stun. The shot back pulls him back in. Buys the space, but Sven Scaring gets the kill all the same. Braum disengages PUE. Ezreal True Shot Brosh not going to be enough, but maybe Biofrost starts to re engage. Can't find the slow, though. And CLG will not get a trade Wiggly. kill as soon as it respawns. Yeah, CLG just got to give this one up. Uh, Wiggly on top side of the jungle, plus the mid power difference at the moment is too high. So Cloud9 easily and teleport used for Ruin, bottom side without anything gained, a really good output of threat from Sneaky and Zazel. But will they get punished now? Ruins here has a slow. Actually, this could be enough. Sneaky does have flash. Ult over to the side. Now, big damage in the Zazel, though, who is summonerless. And Sticksley does claim that kill. Second round of the chase, not going to find a kill. It will burn Sneaky's flash, though. And Ruins sticking around, picks up something big. But now, oh. Niski with the solo kill. Triforce is done. Has yeah. the ward over the edge of the wall, so makes that ultimate very easy and clean. Ruin, he's going to try to get away. It will be a trade. Solo kill Sneaky gets killed back for it, but now Liquid is a free lane to play. Yeah, it's CLG claiming this Drake now for themselves, and looks like they're going to be able to clear away mid wave and not lose that turret either. Yeah, very good little pincer there from CLG. They easily able to run around the map. 3,092 out, just enough to make that happen. And here we go, pressure on to that tier one turret in the mid lane, down below half HP. They've got to respect, though, what Sejuani might do for an engage. You've got a Kali coming on the wings. There's the first stun. Here comes the hard engage for Aurelia. Hits three with it, and the charge is in. Will they reach the back line? Seal, you try to disengage. They pick up one, but it's traded back by Licorice. Quickly, up the stopwatch. Has to buy a few more seconds. Up bar. Very, very low. Grab now by Biofrost. Look for the re-engage. Shockwave on the two. CLG, can they claim a second kill? It's on the ruin now, and Niski finds him. PoE's at 12 oh. HP. A stopwatch dot is an auto attack. But oh. Niki still has the follow-up. And it's three for one. Cloud Nine. Pretty clean for C9. That game, this game was on a knife's edge at this yes. moment in the mid lane. CLG had just started up Baron and forced CLG to walk to them. Going right away. Shockwave down. Most ultis are gone. It's really only top oh. and Oh, Trundle, it's Stixay. Just knocked oh. down in the middle of the map. No jungler around. A clean pickup there for the C9 side. Pee Wee forced to run away. Niski puts on some damage, and a Tom Kench brings him to safe. All right, Licorice. Seen by the Scryer. Not able to get any red buff on They're starting up. Sneaky and Niski, plenty of damage to do it. Kaisa will rip through this thing. CLG seems aware. They're trying to find their way forward, but the pillar's been used, and there's not a lot of other engage tools. Shockwave delivery's not there. And a clean for the summoners are burned, but mid lane is under fire right now as well. And Cloud9 feel comfortable with this one. Juking away is Sneaky, not getting true shot. Barrage finds the shots on the bottom inhibitor turret now as well. Mid inhib is cracked. The bot one now open, and CLG have yet to find their way in. It's been losing control for 20 minutes. Shockwave is going to find a bit of space towards Niski. No easy escapes here for the Aurelia. Could take the damage, has to flash away. Gangplank not going to find the opening just yet, as GA is also still available for that mid laner. Siege continues. Redemption buys his base. Pee-wee looks at the damage on Niski. Cannot quite knock that one down. Goes to the big play. That's GA popped, and now Sven Skirin's coming around. Pee-wee can't find his way in. He's smited. He's taking a lot of damage. He's going to flash in for more kills. And Rune's going to drop as well. Make it a second as the mid laner finally does die. And a 5v3 is all that Cloud9 need. They will push CLG back to the fountain. They will knock down the turrets, and C9 will take down first place CLG. 5-3 and three, heading into Rift Rivals.
Cloud9 looking strong. Creating plays across the map this time. Niski on the mid lane Aurelio with some nice roams from Zazel and Svenskaren early to control that vision. They get the early money onto Aurelia, fund the Trinity Force, allows them to spread the map. Yep. Bottom lane playing very well for themselves. Sneaky and Zazel outputting pressure in an incredibly powerful 1v1 situation. Big sauce that he picked up with the Spell Thief, so no big cost to him. And that's what we're looking for. Tempt in the top side, though, forcing Fake so on Flash to dodge the W. Oh. The but one more out of means it's done. There it is. And they will nake him down. Fake God is gone. A solo kill. Sorry. Duo Stealing kill. Stealing a pretty clean dive. Leave. And yeah, again, Trundle's far enough away that this is a pretty doable dive. Fake God's summoner list does have an ult, but that is it. When do they go in? Burns the E, gets some damage across. Here comes the attempted stun, but look how tanky Sejuani is. Is not going to be perturbed by this turret at all. And a very clean, easy kill in the top lane yet again. Gold toward Marty Viper. Turtle uses teleport. Wajid is still here. Objective should be theirs. Plenty of damage on this mountain. Drake is going to be a pretty clean pickup, though. Amazing coming around. Does have flash and spite. Actually has a chance of going for a steal, but now zoned out by Wadid. It does not want to get devoured. So that's a quick pickup there. Nice one, and now looking at a sleep towards Ryu, does cleanse walk away, but now ring it towards Wadid, and this time he is isolated. Will go down to amazing, so a one for nothing. 100 Thieves are on the board as Ryu goes back to his turn. One getting those kills. Yeah, half of the gold lead is entirely on Viper right now. The 800, 400 is on to that Camille above this one, but now towards the bottom side, while Toto puts down the spell shield, getting away from some of the knockers this time. It will knock them both up, though, and Wadid's not going to go very far. Now looking at Wild Toto yet again. They have the damage. Can they chase down for more? No, he's down to the turret, but damage into Amazing. He's got to be respectful as well. One for nothing down here. Now Pavalto looking for the damage. Good hit towards Ryu. Stunned, but still walking forward. They might find a bit more. Now trading even more spells back and forth. Good shielding comes in, and Pavalto actually... Ooh, number four, and Turtle not even allowed to grab the caster minions for gold. As his bot lane is going very quickly in the way of there Hunter Thieves. Bang has been a big force for the squad of late, as now Fake God's on the way out. That's a flash wave, still getting stunned. And now a second time, over the wall comes Viper. Stopwatch buys a couple of seconds, but you have to assume they have the damage. Actually even burns his own ultimate. Gets nothing for it. Several. He's on a ward here. Santorin might get pincered. Okay, this could be an engage. They're gonna find the first stun on towards Rakan. After we're gonna find the charm though. Knock up Henry as well. Jumps back to the team. Is gonna go down to Viper. Hit it over the top though. Do they have the damage? Nice jump by the 80 carry. Bang gets away from Camille. Gets that trade, and that is a kill. I will. 4,000 health and counting. The jungler's far away still. They don't have him anywhere nearby. This is an easy smite for Amazing as long as they don't the rest of the squad. And here comes Sivir ulti. That's gonna be claimed. And now, what about the second half of that fight? Big damage to the Sivir. Them pushing down mid lane. Yeah, FlyQuest get a constellation prize. Cloud Drake for themselves, so maybe a little bit of extra move speed next time to get there quicker, but... Cloud <laughs> Drake is theirs indeed. And 15 seconds on the Baron respawn means that's gonna be the apple of 100 Thieves' eye. Right now, the top part, and they go for the inhibitor. That one's almost certainly going to drop. Mid lane out are gonna go down as well, and just like that, the game has... Immediately, like us running up the river. It's gonna be a quick answer at 100 Thieves. They have to get there quickly. You can see Fake God, do I answer? Down to 6,000. They might be able to burn oh! it. It's going to be close. Can the Spike come over? Can it over the wall? Spike does go to Santor, but out of the team fight. 5v5, and Zoe's already gone. The second kill goes through to Wadid. Baron for two kills, and it's time for aggression. This time for 100 Thieves as well. That is inhibitor turret gone. Inhibitor itself is going to drop as well. Fake God is still in the base. 4v3 siege, but the respawn's in eight seconds. So after this inhib, out they go. Baron power play. That Turtles farmed it up. Level 16 himself. Has the full crit multipliers. Viper, Ooh. big damage, finds his son. Look at that burst! Oh my word, almost kills him, flashes, but cannot find Aphromu. So Viper might lose the Garden Angel and does, and he's alone. One versus three, there is not a way out. He's gonna be almost stunned, tries to run, looks for a bit of damage, nearly takes down Ryu. He makes it look close, but it wasn't in the end. One for zero, killing the top laner. And Zoe both can do some pretty good shots from over the walls. Going. To play. Good damage onto Amazing. Fourth on health onto this Baron. Centaur not going over. Smite's going to go pretty cleanly over. It's actually Banga picks it up. Amazing did smite, I do believe. But now look at the re engage. As Afro presses R, looks for the knockup, finds a little bit there. And nice by Wadid. But Centaur can still put the optic of affection. Will not die just yet. Can they still find Wadid? No. But they're running forward. They find the slow. They put up the gray health. He has to burn the stopwatch. And that might be enough for the kill. They put in the damage. They do get that one right as Viper respawns. It remains the 5v4. Poke is not going to... And they lie in wait. No vision for FlyQuest. 
in that pixel brush. Going They're where? circling around and they got him. Finally engaged towards Viper. Does find the shot away, but he's got to be careful as Pooh Belter is an auto away from dead. They're trying to find him and bang does get that kill. It's suddenly a 5v3 in the map. They can go Bear. And that opens up the mid lane. Inhibitor will be taken. Baron will be the as long as they can mark Santorin, there will not be a smite steal. So for the teams have zoned out the opposing junglers. And it was initially a 20 minute Baron rush. Now this summer other dragon buff is gone, but Baron's still on for quite a while. And now it's two open lanes with minions flooding in. 100 Thieves closing in on their third win in a row. Damage and a pole belter almost pulls him back. He might burn. He barely stays alive. The re-engage comes in. Not going to find that kill. Santorini eating up. Going to stay alive. One turret is gone. 100 Thieves looking for the play. Out of the back land. Stopwatch. Beautiful. Viper's going to go down without anything to his name. And now the Nexus is open. They're going to find these kills. They're going to find their win. Three in a row for 100 Thieves. When do you start believing in this roster? Three in a row, three and one since the swap. Have they found the formula that fixes the issues? Is 100 Thieves back to looking like the team that made finals in their first split? Reuse they could pull a switcheroo here. What will the answer be oh. if they do expect Impact to be taking the Jace? Once again, we have our second, so a little bit more than usual Taric numbers. Yeah, and of course, very high base attack damage. The passive helps as well. Mm -hmm. Percentage of his own max health is extra damage right here. Is double. Oh. He's going to get bound. That is massive damage. But look at the shielding coming back in. There's just enough. They layered it all. And I think Core was rooted. Couldn't devour him. Yeah, he was able to take it down with Vulcan's extra DPS. Double tries to stop the back there, but it doesn't register damage in time. So Cody Sun, not delayed. That's very big. There's a mountain Drake with that Silas. His landing wasn't so bad. Just take Jace and be Jace. Now your landing is good. Uh, he's ranged. That's going to be a stun, though. This could be really big damage. The Vinyl is going to land. Well, it's going to hit both, but doesn't matter. The shields are in, but Cody Sun will be stunned, and he will be taken down. Double if now on the board, answering back from that kill from earlier. Yeah. Liquid instead. And he'll have three minutes to burn it before plates drop, and likely gets two or more out of it. Arm guard done for Huni. Finds himself in a fight against Impact. Puts the shield up. Actually, really good damage here. Now turns back into Jace himself and puts on some shots. Or actually, oh my god! Look at that! Huni presses 17 different skills and kills. Ocean Drake X50 goes for the steal over the top. He has flash to get out of it. Gets really hairy for him. So are they gonna go for the spike? But it looks like yes, they find the stun. Who's gonna spike this one? And it goes to X Smithy. Cordier J saves double. But here comes Skarner. Beautiful crescendo, but it's still gonna be enough damage. I will still take that trade. Drake goes over to Team Liquid at the cost of one champion. Yep, turret plates were beat. Oh well. He settled down, but only for a moment, because Sichuani is flanking Clutch Gaming. Big damage towards Double. Do they have the burst? It's gonna be close. Sichuani over the wall. Flash the way oh! the snow. One more auto. He's out of shield. This time Cody Sun claims it. The root auto is 50. Flash again is gonna find that stun. One more auto gets the kill. And Cody Sun, he is in the wrong spot on this map. Finds a root, finds the stun in his own face though. And X50 will slowly but surely find the double kill. Battle Sejuani! X50 the outer turret proccing Sheen as quickly as possible and will eventually even out that gold. And now a play towards Jensen in the mid lane. Big damage on him. He's rooted in place, but still devoured and stays alive here. Here comes lane, Dark Jace. Oh! oh! Core couldn't block the ulti coming across, so the two snipers are the Clutch Gaming had had all the left side wards off the reset. It's Team Liquid who were able to strike first up there, and they find an outer turret kill, bringing the game within 700. Once again, they'll play towards the mid lane as Jensen gets a lot of damage, and Cody Sun isolates himself! He ran downwards instead of towards his teammates, and of course, TL were coming for the tower. Dive. 17 seconds left on Cloud Drake, and they're pushing in on bottom. Oh. Demonte's on the run. And there's a fast Tom Kench. Damante has a turret for safety, but he is still stuck in 1v3. Big ult by some space, but the damage likely to be there. The tanks are tanky. The damage is there. Damante is going to fall. All right. Damante goes down. Will they all for them? The first ocean, now this cloud. No one brittles today, actually, at all across any of our games. This cloud Drake does go down. Pop. And we have it taunted out. No one's doing anything about this. As long as they don't walk too close to that ward to the left. It's just outside of the control ward itself. They're not disabled, but it gave them some safety. It made them feel like they were okay. This will not be checked in time. Sejuani's nearby, but it shouldn't be close enough. That will be right next 
or I can't have your Caitlyn sure. right next to your Lux, as the stone of threat is real. One top lane, though, steals the Jace for him. In comes Dick Smith. He finds some damage. He's going to find the Sun and Hooney now. Do they have the burst damage? Oh, certainly they do, as the rest of the squad comes by as well. Unfair, 4-1, to one, and it's not even close. TL picked that one. Monty takes poke, and... And getting lightly healed, they're gonna walk back down to the river. Still looking for the bait, not gonna find the root though, and Team Luka able to stay safe right here. Jensen still pushing the top end, it's actually a 5v4. If they can bring the whole squad around, Silas over the wall, they're coming for it now. They find the first root, Lyra on the front line, gonna find a bit of damage from Tim. Big backline access, the Zero only wants to disengage. Lyra gets out of the shield, and here comes oh! the Sun, only under one, but the kill still comes through. Team Luka get the first kill. Jensen claims the second under the turret as Huni running away. Same for Demonte, trying to stay alive. They might just find the next kill. They've almost got the damage, but did they go too far? Team Luka have low health for it, but it's Smithy. Again, the battle says Juani claims kill number three. A three for or Zero. Not. And Team Liquid will use that team fight oh. victory to surround Lyra. He's going to have a really hard time getting away from this one. They are all around him. Demonte cannot help. Four unanswered kills. The inhibitor is certain to fall. A Drake, when they wanted the Baron, still 90 seconds away. The inhib is gone. 30 seconds on Lyra to respawn. A little bit of poke from Caitlyn, not going to mean enough though. And out goes Team Liquid after a huge. Jensen pushes in. Team Liquid have the high ground. Clutch are forced into a bad spot, so they're forcing Baron. They're forcing them to come and fight. Desperation. They find the stun. They pull back Switch One. Look how tanky he is, and he's pulled back by Core JJ. Where is the re-engage? When did the stun land? If you stay safe, protection buys his base. Jensen in the back line finds a couple of stuns. Big damage out of Lux through the shields over the top, and Lyra running out of health. A big stun for Dublin. There's the kills, but it's two for two so far. But will it be more? Cody Sun finds his third. It's actually Clutch Gaming who win the team fight so far with shields and full health. He's happy to keep doing more. There's minions on top side as well. Team Liquid. Smithy's going to actually cut them off. They're gonna. Spotted. This red buff, Caitlyn's pretty dangerous, but double it has huge burst damage. Smithy should be able to take pretty good damage here. Vulcan very low on mana. Like for oh. the they find the slow, they find the stun. The big shield comes out. Look at the burst and how the kill just yet, but double it. You go for the next kill. And he's got the shutdown. The power cord so strong as Vulcan is running. Only by the single root, though. And the next shot will get a double kill. Five, two, and six on the Sona. Looking at Huni now as well. Can he find the slow? He can. That might just be enough. Sejuani comes forward. Needs two more autos. They're going to get the kills. The cleanup comes through. Smithy is on a rampage. And they're in the mid lane now as well as Core JJ solos a turret. TP comes in from the top lane as Impact now joining in as well. And Team Liquid could maybe close the game out. It's four versus two right now. Waiting 15 seconds for respawns. Another one for the Sejuani. Lyra's trying to run. He'll be shut down as well. Six kills for the battle, Sedge. And the second turret will drop. Team Liquid will remain in control of first place as they will take down Clutch Gaming in 29 minutes. Six and two for TL. You were talking in Champion Select, Freak, about North America being one of the regions that has a higher priority on Sona than most others. Yep. You get a little glimpse of it there as to why. I'm a little bit sad we didn't get to see the death cap, so it draws even more attention. Yep. But I have to say, MVP of that game for me was still... Composition instead. Looking like it will be, you know, more for that late game. Trying to has to concede that objective. But now, TSM, they seize the opportunity to go to the bottom half of the map. They'll grab the Cloud Drake, and that is a nice early pickup there for the game. And we've been seeing so much Trundle coming back into the meta uh, as he's going up mostly against tank junglers and big Ole. Oh, here, Ole. Good lord, man. Ole is out of there. First blood, TSM. Yeah, that C caliber net reset. He hits the Piltover Peacemaker. That is a full combo, and all autos were weaved in by Smoothie, you know, for the, the loose kind of spark there. The Ooh, Contract stepping a little bit too far forward. Gonna be found out there, a nice pull. Means Smoothie's gonna find the second kill of the game here for TSM. Yeah, they were not expecting him up here. Now Bjergsen, Froggen's gonna be shuffled back right towards TSM now as well. The egg will only delay the inevitable, and TSM are 3-0. TSM really Late left on that top side, so TSM trying to make a counterplay down here on the bottom lane. Acadian and Smoothie here, and Ole gonna face check. Acadian not quite with the ulti ready to go just yet. Flash away from Ole to keep himself alive. But now he's stranded underneath five the turret. Five. One versus five. Rest he's just peace. waiting for death to come for him. Good night, sweet friends. TSM finding number four. Yeah, but in the meantime, their two members cough, get the first turret. It's five bot for TSM. Trundle is pushing mid, so 
Golden Guardians is actually getting a decent bit back with this. They may come out ahead on the play, despite losing the one man. It's double teleport and definitely uh, what are you doing up I there? Have no idea why definitely stuck around that long. Acadian waiting for the spell shield to go away, making sure he gets the pull. It's exactly how you play Skarner against Sivir. Straight up walks up to the brush. Their, their team had not left. There's absolutely no reason to go for that. When chasing down a Sivir with Skull, the Golden Guardians are down zero to five. They're down 2,000 gold. Monster's not too afraid just yet, though. Contract's gonna be moving up there with him. They're looking to start the fight onto Acadian. It is a two versus three, but it's a fight they're still not afraid to take. Reset. Acadian's gonna fall. That's the reset there for Hauntzer. Continues to look to take this. Uh, they are gonna get his flash as a result. This is one of the things that I always feel like separates uh, the good Anivia players from the great. And here we go. That's gonna be an initiation coming out from the side oh. of the Golden Guardians, and they will pop Bjergsen. Yeah, Bjergsen getting punished pretty heavily. Very flash. Uh, fast flash there from Froggen, reacting immediately, so Bjergsen could not ult him in. And Bjergsen just gets knocked down. This will mean Infernal goes the way of Golden Guardians, but yeah, the try near there. Uh, but, you know, if, if Akkadian is the show in bottom lane, there is a potential that they can just start up the Baron, but right now it's TSM trying to make a collapse here. This has turned into quite a juxtaposition as Froggen is now going to find himself caught out. Mid laners out of position, the name. They have very little room for error, honestly, for these two teams in their engages. If either team messes up, big stun, though. Now it's going to start off here. We're going to see Smoothie going into the stasis here. Immediately, Sven also going to be keeping himself alive just for a moment. Smoothie taken down, also going to be Ole traded away. TSM on the retreat. Acadian's going to oh, be taken Hunter. down. Hunter's popping off. The wings of death fly through the TSM back lines. And it's a double kill for the Golden Guardians top lane. Again from Froggen, he has been a monster this game, creating so much of the action for them with these initiations from the Anivia. The Anivia setting up the plays. Year three is gonna be under siege. TSM, not enough bodies here in time, Azale, and Golden Guardians will put a lot of damage into this turret, might even be able to take it down. Yeah, I think they're just gonna get this one. The frog is sitting at over 600 AP with three items, and they're going to go in. Akkadian goes in. He grabs the enemy support, but he sacrifices himself for it. This is Froggen. what I was talking about early on, Azale. One frontliner. If he messes up, all of a sudden, the engage is gone. The ability to start these things off is gone. Contracts and Froggen continuing to look for more. They're able to find Smoothie and take him out. But it will be a one for one there. Deathly, Hauntzer, and Froggen. Now going to be pressuring onto the tier three into the mid lane as well. Froggen in some trouble. Critical positioning error will be heavily punished. And Bjergsen takes a triple. Yeah, Golden Guardian's going to be careful though that he's not actually spotted out because he gets caught away from the team, but he's on oh, Froggen. He's at the back line. Froggen's going to be suppressed, pulled back towards TSM. Golden Guardian's looking to turn the fight right back around. Acadian going to be taken very low. Hauntzer takes him down, and now he's gone to Reset City. He'll go into the resurrection. Contracts nearly killed himself. Definitely free firing into the TSM lines, but he's going to be taken low, and Bjergsen is dominating. Two dead on the side of the Golden Guardians. Win in doubt. Pushed in, they will lose at least one inhibitor. Contracts is doing the dragon at this point. So he will be able to trade the dragon back. Remember, the Baron is spawning. They overchased, and now they're looking. Now they're starting off. Bjergsen has to flash over the wall to keep himself alive. Oh, they're still gonna make it happen. You bring Bjergsen down, you're gonna win yourself the game, but Hauntzer's now the one who's gonna be targeted. He has to flash out, but he's taken down. TSM has found a huge fight. The Golden Guardians bite off way more than they can chew, and they'll be absolutely annihilated. They get shredded, but Froggen trying to turn this around. Look at the damage from Froggen. Oh, but now it's nothing but a sunny side up breakfast on the side brush of the red pit. That's Ben going on another kill for himself. Contracts healing up in the brush. Not really a match for Broken Blade 1v1, or maybe he is. Broken Blade trying to put some damage back down onto him. He's gonna Contracts him. should be able to take him down here, and I am found wrong in my analysis. The Trundle takes down that Jace. And now Skarner versus Trundle, 1v1. Skarner building full tank, not on a Skarner He's fire. got the Warmogs. He's This is not up. a fight that Skarner wins. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Trundle is the one who wins this fight, but not unless he's alone. 
The only way you can win this is if you're fighting Skarner fair, and TSM is not about a fair fight. They'll look to hand this one over to Zvan, put more money in the hands of the AD <laughs> carry, but Contracts will waste as much time as he can uh, before Bjergsen swoops in. But that may have, you know, potentially yeah, seen more. The game is over, but it seems like Golden Guardians unwilling to give up this Baron. They are in the area here, but Broken Blade, the traps. The yeah. traps mean that Golden Guardians will come no right to you. Golden Guardians have no way to move towards these battle lines drawn by TSM and TSM. Play this out instantly. Golden Guardians want to actually avoid a fight. There's a minute left on the on the Elder, but they're uh, going to win. Golden now. Guardians aren't going to be avoiding much of anything when they go fishing and land themselves a big one. Acadian taken out, but now Ole is incredibly low in the HP department. Got to be concerned about that kill. one. Redemption coming in. Ole will be topped off a little bit from that one. Hauntzer wants to approach from the top. However, there's no way into the fight when TSM can so easily disengage. Acadian's the one guy you can really seek your fangs into. He's the one melee member. Everybody else will maintain distance and continue to do this. Knock this down incredibly fast with Sven. TSM just looking to out macro. That's going to be a four shot on the inhibitor turret. They'll take down the inhib itself. Golden Guardian struggling to rotate around and answer this in any capacity. Froggen's on the side. Contracts all alone in the jungle. He's going to be found out. Pulled back by Acadian, taken down by Sven. And that is Baron guaranteed to TSM now. You have no very intelligent stuff. Bjergsen TPs to that top lane. Sven already there as well. They knocked down the inhibitor almost instantly. This guy wants to bring TSM back to where they're at. I remember discussing oh, yesterday. Oh, to this. Hauntzer trying to go forward. Sven is the target. Hauntzer still looking to find a little bit more damage on him. That's going to be a big pick if Golden Guardians are able to find it and secure the damage. Hauntzer looking to go even further. Broken now Blade Acadian's going to be the end, target, though. but Broken Blade is in the base of the Golden Guardians. Frog going to be the one trying to stop him. Needs to find the stun. Broken Blade's nearly able to take him down. Oh! Oh! Froggen with the clean out play. Froggen! He can defend one versus five with that wave clear, and that's exactly what Golden Guardians are going for now. Smoothie's the only one from TSM, even in the area. There will be no contest for this aside from a laser. Golden Guardians, very glad to see that. Blade, because Haunter's TP wasn't up, and the Baron is live. But again, Golden Guardians now have to funnel through these areas. There's the trap set up. Here's Bjergsen sitting on his tower, and Golden Guardians look like they want to get Bjergsen. Ole's going to engage, but it's only onto Acadian. That's the frontliner. That's the one guy you don't want to be Never engaging there. to. You have no AD carry. Your support is dead, and things oh, are... Anyway, Sivir was not there. This is going to be yet another Baron going the way of TSM, and they will have this Baron buff for when the second Elder spawns again. Third Elder of the game, but... They're actually looking like they want to fight. Uh, be careful. Golden Guardians trying to go for something here. Froggen flashing away from Acadian, keeping himself from getting grabbed. Haunter looking for some damage onto Bjergsen there in the back line. Golden Guardians still looking to maybe take the fight even further. Froggen's going to be taken low, gets himself away. Golden Guardians disengaging now. Still 14 seconds before oh, Ole is back playing. alive. But here comes the Bjerger King around from behind. The Golden Guardians the find themselves routed. Froggen's going to be taken very low. Goes into the egg now. They'll have to try to protect him. Golden Guardians grouped up, trying to play protective president. The VIP is down. And Bjergsen will again find his mark broken blade kills contracts and the golden guardian stands 3v5 2v5 1v5 tsm chasing into the base definitely the last man standing and sven will keep him in the fountain tsm are on the victory march after 49 minutes the longest game of summer split tsm will take down the golden guardian and what a performance by Bjergsen. Even finding the teleport flank to end the game, getting behind Frog and corralling him into the rest of the team. That was one of the best Azir games you are ever going to see. That was an insane performance from the TSM. Carries Sven only one death, two on Bjergsen. TSM, once they got online, Golden Guardians just could not leave. Find also something that works very well against all these dashes yeah. that are over on the Xbox team. You know, four of their champions do have those dashes. It's going to be two days, two Vladimir's here. He's actually going to kind of make the move into his opponent's jungle. Yeah, he's not afraid of anything. It's, he's level three versus two. He could take this. Over the wall he goes, and yeah, that one's going to be secured by Meteos no Panda flash now. Panda. In a lot dead. of danger. Yep, one more thwap of the flail. First blood Ouch. drops to gaming.
Ah, that sucks. He got the smite. They are now the ones who feel so good about where this game is going. Echo Fox have found an avenue, though. Going after the Cloud Drake. Some early game movement speed will help out with these rotations to see if maybe they can get the drop on Op. Yeah, to keep himself safe. But if you stay around, Medios is for sure going to try to come in and threaten this. Dive still probably going to go off here, top lane. One minion left alive. Medios able to make his way onto the enemy top laner before he can get out alive. And the Aatrox changes to World Ender means no assist, no kill, no reset. Medios gets himself over the wall. Phoenix can't quite find the damage, and now Scarlet will continue over the cliff to take him down. Bad goes to worse there for Echo Fox as they are so... Lane, but Crown is out. They're playing towards top, and Dokla has the matchup and has had that success in the early game to dictate it. And what a change for this team, man. This is a team that in previous split, bottom of the standings right now currently having a rough time. Golden Guardian's still around that level, I'd say. They have shown that they're capable of playing some pretty high-level League of Legends, but Optic, one of the teams really stepping up as Scarlet tries to make himself an outplay in the bottom lane. Dokla shows up, but he will not be able to keep his mid laner alive. Echo Fox barely able yeah. We'll have Rift Rivals next week, and then week five will be after that. Week five will mark the halfway point through Summer Split. That, I think, is the stat that tells everything. To be able to make an adaptation, to change the way the team communicates and plays, to make that the reality, to make this the reality. Optic Gaming need one more shot to take down Lolo, but they won't quite grab it. Meteos goes down, and Optic overcommit. Having a great game for your jungler. Panda a bit far behind as Dokla fights up against Corlo, but it won't be a 1v1 for long. Disengage coming out from Dokla. TP will be expended by the side of Optic, looking to make a play happen here. Prowling projectile finding its way onto Panda. Meteos moving forward, not gonna find the stun onto anyone. Lorlo trying to get himself away. He's in the World Ender, but he doesn't have a reset just yet. He's gonna get one here in a moment. Scarlet is taken down. Lorlo goes into the reset now, and oh boy, did Optic mess up. Echo Fox will find four. Echo Fox, you're battling back so heavily. Optic in an outcome that bad. But Optic managed to overcommit <laughs> so heavily that they did. Those are not the kind of errors that should even be crossing your mind. If a play can even yeah. go that badly, I don't think you should even be considering it up and try to attack again once Arrow, you know, has no flash still and you have your ultimates back. Makes sense. So I think that is in that. If you get rooted up, you can start getting shredded by the rest of it. But they're TPing in. They want this fight. Phoenix Ooh. is behind. Hakuo tries to go in with a quickness, but he's not able to find anyone there with the Rakan. Scarlet enters into the pool, and now the counterattack comes out. Off the gaming, trying to make this one go the distance. Panda's going to be taken very low as Apollo's taken down first. Panda follows him into the abyss, and it's 2-0 for Optic. Yeah, great engage there. Gaming, I said it earlier. All you need is one of these Meteos ultis to really connect, and the team can follow it up. And now, they're the ones with the Baron. Dollar signs in the eyeballs right now, looking at all these standing turrets outside of the Echo Fox base. Four turrets left to take. The tier twos and tier ones still standing. I mean, there's lots of ways to capitalize as they'll find a kill on the panda. Looking to go even further. Scarlet likely going to be killed off here. Goes into the stasis, looking to buy a little bit of time. Dokla makes his way into the fight, but they've got the reset on Delorlo. He'll look for even more, but he goes into the resurrection. Phoenix going into the stasis, but so is his opponent. Now it's going to be Lorlo coming back to life. Hawk will have a retreat here yet again. Echo Fox wants to disengage. Apollo goes into that feather storm. He's able to bait them back. Opta continuing to go forward. Apollo continuing to kite. Meteos is down. Echo Fox has won their fight! They're gonna get the loot pinata too! See you later! Triple kill Apollo! Apollo cleaning up! What an hour here as well! Echo Fox fighting back! That was on par with the bottom lane dive for optic mistakes that go in Echo Fox's favor. Fox That's the Baron pin. Yeah, Echo Fox are gonna be starting up this Baron. Optic is coming over here. They are gonna be grouped up. You can see Phoenix though on the flank here, wants to try to go oh, in. Oh, baby, Dokla's gonna be the target, and that is a big pick to start things off with. Scarlet having a retreat now, too. Optic's trying to back away, but Lorlo's into the back line. All he needs is his reset, and he's gonna find it. Apollo's on a rampage, and Optic are cut to pieces. They'll find even more disaster as Echo Fox chases further. Scarlet goes into the pool and into the grave as Apollo gets a triple. One more will make it make a something point. happen, but what I do you don't even think he's going to be able to do it. I mean, you just have to try to clear the minion wave and, and suicide for that. Big separates from his AD carry. He tries to fire off some spooky ghosts. It will not succeed. Echo Fox 
will find their second win of the split. And a big one it is, taking down Optic, who is sitting at five and two. That second win, so important for Echo Fox here. And what a game from the bot lane. Phoenix coming up big here too, but Apollo certainly enormous lead over his counterpart and really made it work in the team fights. Phoenix, Apollo, and Hakuo all had really good games. Hakuo, no deaths as the primary initiative, one of the primary initiatives.